everybody, it's Jeff from Dumbridge here, and today I'll be showing you my update to King Cold. Uh, so, yeah, start with, um, obviously we've got the leader card, so if you're activating the skill of a green field with cost 2, it's reduced by 1, so all your green fields just basically cost 1. Um, when it's placed in the leader area, you auto play King Cold's Dynasty, because you need to. And then it's act, it's up also as lots of turn. When you activate a green field with cost two, you add up to one card from the left to your hand and draw a card. So you get an awakened skill, well, a self awakening skill by playing field. And if you're on four less, you get two energy back, flip them over. Uh, keeps the same permanent, so reduce cost on fields. It's auto just becomes when you play a field, draw a card. You don't add a life this time. And then its active battle is once per turn, you can choose a field card and place it in the drop area and it gains 10k for the battle. So just gives them a nice little boost and you don't have to throw any combo into it, you literally just have to sacrifice a field. But most of the fields have an effect when you get rid of them and then there's ways to get them back so you don't really lose out on anything. Uh, so I'll immediately show King Cold's Dynasty because they don't make sense towards the deck. Um, a tiny bit. There we go. So King Cold's Dynasty is a six cost. It's got barrier and field ability. This doesn't matter. You only run it in this deck because it's the only thing it can work with. So you don't even need to pay six. Uh, its pun is if your lead is a green King Cold, you can play any number of mono green extra card fields with a cost of two. Um, but you can't place a new one until you get rid of the previous one. So whereas with most fields, if you play one out, you can then just go, oh, I'll play the same card on top and get rid of the previous version. With this one, you have to have it off the field before you can play a new one. Um, and yeah, it just basically means that you can run multiple fields. as like It also lets you play multiple fields without having to get rid of any. As long as it all cost two green mono mono green cost twos, so that's basically all the deck is there for. Is just to pump out fields and use your field skills to enable your other effects. Um, so to start with, we've got our unison, which is just four copies of King Vegeta Umbra Vader. It's two cost fifteen k. He's got uh, two active mains. The first one being plus one. Choose up to one mono green field with extra card for cost of two from your hand and play it. So it saves you an NG on playing field spell and that it just adds one to play one. Um, its other action means minus one. Your opponent chooses one of their back cards, cost five or less and KOs it. I often don't use that one because I ever go for the minus three or plus one. And if my use is being hammered, I need to plus one. So, and then its minus three is active battle. It gains triple strike and 5k for each field in your battle area. So, bearing in mind, you immediately start with one which is King Cold's Dynasty. And there are four other ones in the deck. It can ramp a lot of... It can give to about 40k triple strike. Which, if your opponent hasn't negated, because it's an active battle, you spring that after the counter step. So, you spring it when they don't expect it. Well, why do you have enough markers to do it? Because it is a minus three, so you do need to build up. Uh, so going now into the extra cards, which there is a large number of, but that's basically how the deck rolls. To start with, we've got four copies of a new ruler. So um, obviously, two cost field. It's auto. Its first auto is when this card is placed in battle, out to one card from your left to your hand. Then look up three cards from the top of your deck, add up to one minor green card to your hand, and place the remaining cards in bottom in any order. So on place, you can essentially add two cards because you could take one from your life and get one from the top of the deck. And there's also your leader skills to boot, which could either give you a card again from your life and draw a card, or just draw you a card. So this thing can just add cards for days. And then its secondary effect is when it's placed in your drop area from battle by one of your skills, you draw a card, then discard a card. So it just lets you filter a card, but it's useful because then you get any pop effects from your fields, 
and you could just use something like berry, well you could use berry blue afterwards to play it out from drop or you could just play a new one from hand. Uh, next we've got four copies of Anticipated Onslaught. So this one is basically the one field you don't get rid of once it hits play. Um, so again, two cost field. It's got auto, if your leader is a green king called BR. When this card is placed in battle rate, you draw one, then choose it to one mono green to freeze a clan or freeze on a card, cost two or less from your hand, and play it. So when you play this, you get a free body on the board, and you draw a card which gives you a better chance of seeing a card, and you can also use the leader skill to add cards before you do this on place effect. And it's other auto is once per turn. When a green field in your battle rate, other than this card is placed and dropped by one of your skills, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, cost two or less, and care it. So, you essentially don't replace this because it always has an effect. So, like, you'll always have this effect going off the first time you pop a field, which is really useful. You might decide, oh, I've used this effect, so I've got another one ready to go. So, I'll use a different effect to get rid of this, play a new one, get its on place effect, and then I could reuse the effect again. So it's very useful, but it is one. It is for me, I always feel like once I've hit seen it and it's hit the board, I don't replace it unless it's worth it for like strategy's sake. So, but it's why you run it at four because it's like the one you really need to see. Uh, next, we got two copies of Homicidal Clones. So this is a counter attack. If it is green, well, if it is mono green. Negate the attack, then play one med token, and the med tokens are just little 5k things with blocker. And then if your life is at 5 or less, you can activate it by taking a life instead of paying the 2 energy. Which is basically what you do, you just take one, play this, get a blocker, use the blocker, and there you go, you've stopped 2 attacks by paying one life. Uh, next is another negate for the deck, which is four copies of Royal Supremacy. Um, this thing is just monstrous as a like as a counter attack. I feel like it's really good for um, like deck specific counter attacks. It is definitely for me. I feel like it's one of the better ones because it's got negate the attack, then choose any number of your opponent's battle cards whose energy cost adds up to three or less than care of them, so you could just target a bunch of tokens and then a free cost or you could go free one drops, a two and a one drop, and just a two drop whatever you want, you just do a nice combination and its opponent is, if you have three or more green extra cards with field skills in your battle area, you can play this card for free so you can tap yourself out and instead of paying the two or worrying about having to pay two, you just play, well I've got fields no and then blow something up so yeah, this card is just really useful and you have to run it as four because this is your primary source of negating. So you just want to see that and have it on standby ready to go. Uh, next we've got two copies of Terrified Realization. So again, field, uh, permanent. If you have four more extra cards in your battle area, with the field skill, your green freezer clan battle cards gain 5k power during your turn. So anything freezer, cold or cooler gains 5k. And then when it's placed in your battle area, you can add a card from your left to your hand and draw a card. So it's got a nice simple on place effect. Doesn't do anything that's blown up, but that's because it gives a opponent of 5k. But what's really handy is that it essentially clones your unawakened leader skill on place. So you could do that twice, take two life, draw two cards. Or if you're awakened, you can just take a life if you really want, draw a card, draw a card. So it's completely up to situation, but yeah, I don't see needing more than two of this because once it hits field, you either leave it alone or you pop it and then bring it back when you need it. And then finally for the fields, we've got three copies of Unstoppable Invasion. So, like I said, it's a field card. It's got auto of when is, if the leader is a green king card card, when it's placed in battle area, add up to one card from life to your hand, then your leader card gains 10k in double strike for the turn. So it's a field that gives your leader um, champer, basically. The only downside is that if you've 
used it on the unawakened side and you go down to four, once you awaken you lose that double strike. You'll keep the power because power transfers but not double strike. So if you're playing this either be awakened or just use it to put a bit of early game pressure. And then when this card in the battle is placed in your drop by one of your skills you choose up to one of your opponent's units and cards and remove a marker from it. So just a nice little bit of disruption hitting their unisons as well to boot and then obviously you pop it, you play a new one, you give your leader 10 king double strike and you get rid of a marker if they have a unison play. So moving on to battle cards now we have our one drops which are four copies of berry blue and there's two paragus to sacrifice which is the reprinted version from the anniversary box because why not um, so berry blue her altar is when this card is placed look up to seven cards from top of deck add either up to one green you assume a specified cost of two so this thing or you add one green field card and then shuffle your deck which that alone pretty useful and her active range is once per turn you pay green if your leader is king cold you activate one mono green field with cost two from your drop area so this is why i was saying you can blow up fields to get them back later is that berry blue lets you pay one to play from your drop so if you don't have one another copy in hand you could go well i'll use an effect pop this use berry blue bring it back out activate it and there we go she recycles your fields for you and then Paragus uh, is active main once per turn. You choose a green card in your battle. Other than this card, place it in drop, draw a card, which you can target your fields. And I completely overlooked putting this card in the deck. Um, when I first built it, I just kind of forgot it was a thing. I didn't think about using it as well. I tried to use more of the set stuff. And then when Matt was asking me about how much have I looked into how people built the deck, I was like, not really. And he's like, do you run Paragus? And my immediate thought was, what? What Paragus? And yeah, pointed out I should be running this card, so now I have two of it in the deck. I could run more, but I feel like you don't really need that many Paragus. I run two, and that feels fine by me, because I essentially play one, ditch the other. So if I bother to play it, sometimes I just don't bother with Paragus, and that's fine. It's fine by me. Other people might say I'm more on for it, but hey, it's my place now. Uh, so moving on now to two drops, we've got my own little personal tech, three copies of Berta Fastest in the Universe. Um, so I don't run a lot of the promos that people put with this deck, I also don't run for Charismatic Villain, but that's because I only possess one. And there's like there's a Gohan and Zamasu promos and some other promos that people put in this deck, that I just don't have. So my way of kind of changing the deck is that I've put Berta in. Because Berta is a 15k blocker. He's got unique. But his auto skill is where he really comes in. Is at the end of your turn. He switches to active mode. Then look at the three cards on top of your deck. Place them on top and or bottom of your deck in any order. So during your turn. He's a 15k beater. You end your turn, you stack your deck, whether it's the top three, and you just go, oh, I'll move these around. You might leave them be, you might put them to the bottom, or put two to the bottom, one on top. And then, during your opponent's turn, you have a 15k blocker. And normally, with Berta, I don't pay the two, unless I've got the energy spare and nothing else to do. I primarily just try to target Berta with this effect, because it lets you play him, because he's a freezer's army. And then, yeah, you can just use block, Bertha to block and deck stack. Which is very handy. But like I said, it's just my personal tech. Uh, next, we've got four copies of our super combo, which is just defending Father Paragus. So if you're on four or less, you can lose green. You draw two, send one to the warp. Just lets you get rid of dead cards. Like, you can get rid of a field so that you can actually have some um, combo pieces. You can get rid of a card that you're just not being able to play or that you don't think you're going to need so it's just kind of better one for the deck because it gets rid of dead cards and we've got 
two copies of E Supreme Kai. Basically like Champa just gives it something double strike and it's a 10k combo. So comes in handy for that double strike pressure. Um, so for the three drops we just have King Cold Supreme Ruler. It's just negate and play, reduced by one for each um, few green X card in your battle area. So it just basically becomes a one cost negate. And then when it's played, your parent can't attack with their leader card unless they choose. Well, they can't attack um, leader cards for a turn unless they choose a card from their hand and discard it each time. So if you feel a bit of rush coming on your leader, you can just play this out. And every time they want to attack the leader, they have to discard the card. Which often when I do that, they just pummel the hell out of my unison. So I'd be warned of that. And it is one of those cards that you could take out to run up things like Charismatic Villain, maybe just up some numbers elsewhere, but I find it can be quite handy, and then it's just a 15k beater. So, gives you a body on the board for one energy and stops attacks. Uh, moving on now, we've got our four drop, which is three copies of Cooler Effortless Strike. So it's got counterplay, you play him, and then battle, if the battle card being played costs four less, it goes to drop. Uh, its cost is reduced by one for each green X card in your battle on drop area. So it can be played across decks because it counts drop area, so if you've been negating, you're fine. And then when it's played, if your opponent has eight more cards in their hand, they choose a card and discard it. So it can just take a card out as well if they've been holding cards. Or just doing a lot of drawing. Um, moving now to the five drops, as stated before, a singular charismatic villain. So, counterplay, you play it, but you can't use any more counterplay skills. If you have a green user with two or more marks on it, you play it for free. And then when it's played, you choose one of your opponent's back cards, seven or less, and KO it. So, it's just a nice little free counterplay that can blow something up and yeah I like I said I only run one if you could run more I'd probably say just ditch these run for that or whatever it's just a bit expensive and I haven't thought about buying more but with the amount of green decks I have I probably should oh well and the other five drop for the deck is four copies of golden freeze of pinnacle of the clan so this is basically our big boss of the deck because he's got Deflect, Double Strike, uh, it's 25k, so 25k Double Strike is pretty nice. Uh, you reduce its cost by one for every two green extra cards you have in your battle and drop area. So, if you do it, like, if you have enough fields out and maybe some in the drop, it just becomes a free cost. As in, like, free energy. Because it has Mentoria free. And then Active Main, once per turn, you can choose a green field in your battle area, of cost two, place it in the drop. Choose up to one of your uh, one card in your opponent's hand and one of their battle cards, ignoring by it, place them in your own drop. I keep forgetting to do that part. Taking a battle card and a card from my opponent's hand. Um, don't forget to do that. Might be really useful. And then you switch them to active. So he's essentially a dual attacker. He pops a field which triggers effects. You can bring the field back out if you want to use like Berry Blue. And with um, Terrified Realization, it becomes a 30k double striker that can just swing twice and basically get your game. Which is why he's the big boss. And as a one off in the deck, I have Scientist Foo. The last card. So, Overrealm 7 by Peng 1. He's got double strike, and then when you play this card using Overrealm, you draw two. So, this is just kind of like a backup. Thing because you don't really need anything from your drop except occasionally your extra cards but if you have all the fields out and play and it's worth playing foo you just go screw it foo there we go draw two 25k double striker so just there is like a little um surprise tech because again i don't have cards that most people use but hey it still works out 
So with that all being said, that is my King Carl deck profile. Thank you all for watching, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!